Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at RiverPod. We've previously looked at a couple of set state options, set state and provider. Today we're going to look at a third option called RiverPod. So what is RiverPod? The official documentation states that RiverPod can be considered a rewrite of provider to make improvements that would be otherwise impossible. Without going too in-depth, people regularly file issues or ask questions about some problems they face with provider. The problem is, these problems are deeply rooted in how provider works and fixing these problems is likely impossible without drastic changes to the mechanism of provider. So let's take a look at RiverPod in action. We will be building the same app that we've built in the other state management videos. At the top will be an app bar that says my favorite fruit is, and then we will have three buttons that have different fruit on them. If you select a button, then the app bar will change to say that your favorite fruit is the fruit that is listed on the button. So we're gonna start with our default boilerplate, which has a stateless widget with the material app scaffold and the app bar in it. We're gonna import the material package, set up main, we're going to do a stateless widget here by typing STLESS -S and hitting tab. Putting a question mark there for null safety. We'll create our material app and our scaffold. And then here in app bar. And then the title of the app bar will just be my favorite fruit is unknown currently. All right, if you run it, you can see that everything looks okay so far. So now we will need to install RiverPod. So if you open up your terminal down here at the bottom, you'll just type in flutter pub add flutter RiverPod. Once that's installed, you can come over here to your PubSpec YAML file and you'll see Flutter RiverPod listed. That command installs Flutter RiverPod and runs PubGet for you. So now you should be able to import Flutter RiverPod at the top. We're going to add a provider scope right here. We're going to wrap with a widget. Then we're going to start with the basic provider just to show the fruit name inside the app bar. So we're going to use RiverPod's provider, which is the most basic of all providers. It's just going to expose the object and it cannot be changed. Now we're going to change the stateless widget here to a consumer widget. And because of that, we need to add one more option to the build widget. And then down here in the app bar, I'm going to add watch fruit name. I'm going to go ahead and change this to still unknown so we can actually see it change. And there it is. My favorite fruit is still unknown. I'll change that back now. So now we're going to add three elevated buttons in the body. Each one will have a different fruit name on it. And I'm going to use a custom button. So I'll create the custom button at the bottom. The custom button is going to be a stateless widget. So I'll just type ST less. We'll have a fruit variable that will be a string. So we will now receive that fruit variable. And then down here, we will create the elevated button. And now we can add the fruit button to the body of the scaffold. And there we go. You see all three of the buttons. So now let's try to set the fruit value to the provider in the elevated buttons on pressed. You'll notice that we get an error. 
And it says illegal assignment to a non-assignable expression. That is because we used provider up here. So we can fix that by changing this to a state provider. Then down here, we're going to add dot state. And down here, we will also add dot state. And now it should function the way it's supposed to. Now that is technically the basics of Riverpod, but I can also show you one other option that works more like the original provider and it will use notify listeners. So the first thing we'll do is create a class called favorites at the bottom. So favorite stores the fruit variable, which is currently set to unknown. And then we will call this change fruit to change the fruit variable to the new fruit name. And then we will notify the listeners. So we're going to convert this line right here now to a change notifier provider. Next in the app bar, we'll look for the favorite provider and then look for that fruit variable that's stored here. So we'll change this to favorite provider and change this to fruit. Then down here in the elevated button, we're going to change this to favorite provider and this we'll call change fruit. Okay, let's recap what's going on first. We set up a favorite provider, which is a change notifier provider that is looking at favorites. Then down here in the app bar, we say my favorite fruit is, and it's watching the fruit variable that's inside favorite provider. That's down here and is currently set to unknown. Then it will show three buttons, one that says apples, one that says oranges, and one that says bananas. So if you choose the apples fruit button, it calls the change fruit method that's inside the favorite provider and passes the name of the fruit, which is apples down. So it's calling change fruit right here. And then it's setting fruit, which is currently set to unknown to apples. Then it will notify its listeners, which is this right here. And now this will say my favorite fruit is apples. Let's give it a try. So it still says my favorite fruit is unknown. If I click apples, it changes to apples. If I click oranges, it changes to oranges. And if I click bananas, it changes to bananas. So as always, there's more to learn about Riverpod, but this should give you a basic foundation to start with. You may also like this video here. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next one.